make with the spelt flour was a whole wheat pie crust. So most of these recipes, I'm just taking the regular recipe I have for all purpose flour and I'm going to try it with the spelt flour and so far most of the things I've tried have turned out really nice actually. I did it with um, whole wheat cookies, I did it with pizza crust, tortillas, lots of things. So I'm going to try the pie crust next. So I need a cup of spelt flour, half a teaspoon of salt, and this recipe you can either use butter or lard. If I had lard from one of our animals I would use lard, but I don't like the quality of the lard I have access to. So we're just going to use the butter and I need fourth a cup. Lard crust, I, I've grown up with those. That's always what my grandma and my mom used when they made pie crust. The only thing I don't care for with the lard pie crust, lard pie crust is they tend to be they tend to be very flaky, like to eat them, but also to work with. Like I get very frustrated just with the structure of the dough. And I found that butter works a little bit better. None of them work as well as margarine, but we do not eat margarine. And then you want two to four tablespoons of cold water. I'm just gonna put some in here. I add it basically a tablespoon at a time. Especially with the spelt because it reacts a little bit differently to liquid. Try I've worked with whole wheat flours quite a bit. And I noticed that the whole grain spelt flour is extremely soft when you compare it to whole wheat. The spelt is related to wheat, but it's not wheat. It's like an heirloom variety that's related to wheat. Some people like to chill their dough before they use it. Honestly, I'm impatient and I just like to work with it right away. It seems a little bit more pliable. So it tore a little bit, but it mashes together really nice, nicer than other whole grain flours I've used. So then to do that nice like scalloped edge, you take your index finger, your thumb, and your thumb of the other finger make like a triangle with the two with the dough in between you kind of push them together not perfect but good enough to eat so then i'll just prick the bottom just a couple times and then i'm ready for my pie now we're going to make our our pie filling and I'm going to do a pumpkin pie because that is Nick's favorite pie. It's one of my favorites too but I cannot have all the sugar that's in this so I will look adoringly at it when it's done but I will not be able to eat it. So and I'm going to test the pumpkin pie filling that we just made from the winter luxury pie because they um they just looked, or they tasted really different, so I'm hoping that the pie will be a lot better. Okay, and this is also a dairy-free recipe, because um, when I was eating sugar, I was putting, I was eating this one, but I'm not eating sugar now, so I can't have this, but uh, Nick really likes it anyway with the coconut milk in it instead of uh, whipping cream or condensed milk. So 
This is nine ounce of whole coconut milk. And then you want two cups of pumpkin puree. And then I'm, act I'm actually going to use the maple sugar that we made ourselves this year from our own trees. So I want to see if that added any extra dimension to the flavor. Okay, so that's like in between a half and two thirds. Okay, and then all of the cinnamon. You could just use pumpkin pie spice, but we buy really nice um, spices and they don't come in a mix like that, so you have to make your own mix. Okay, so need about a teaspoon of cinnamon. I should also mention that we like our pies pretty spicy, like with a lot of cinnamon and a lot of spices in them. So if you don't like that, probably shouldn't add as much as I do. About a fourth a teaspoon of allspice. And I'm just eyeballing these. I don't have an exact measurement. I'm using a teaspooner just to get about what I need. About an eighth of ginger. I'm almost out of cloves. About a fourth a teaspoon of cloves. And a fourth a teaspoon of egg. salt. So I'll blend all that up. And then I will add my eggs. Three eggs. Okay. So that's all blended together really well. Ready to go into our pie crust. And then this will go into the oven at 350. My recipe says for 50 minutes, but it always takes way longer than that. I don't know if my oven's not as hot or whatever, but mine always takes over an hour. So that's what it looks like when we pull it out. Once that cools down and sets up completely, I'll have Nick bite into it and we'll give you a taste test review. <laughs> okay, so the pie has cooled down enough for Nick to try it. Looks good. Fairly firm. Mmm. That's pretty good. So... First, talk about the filling. We should have cooked it a little longer. That's your fault. <laughs> You're right. Filling's pretty good. Can you tell it's a difference? It's not too sweet. Can you? It's got a good texture to it. Can you taste the maple? There. Mm -hmm. There's a depth of flavor to it, more than, more than what we've done before. And I don't know if that's the pumpkin itself, or if that's the maple sugar, I'm not sure. Okay, and what about the crust? Crust just tastes like a decent crust. So you can't tell that much difference between that and like an all-purpose flour? No. Does it have a it's little... Got, it's got a little more flavor to it. But it has the texture of it. The texture of it's great. It's, it's crispy, it's holding together underneath it. It's not all soggy or anything like that. That looks good. So does it get a thumbs up? Thumbs up, yeah. Cool.